This is Michael Saltzman from Blue Sky Bio. Thank you to everybody who's taking time from your busy schedule today to attend and watch this webinar presentation. As usual, if you have any questions during the webinar presentation, please enter them into the chat box. And please make sure to enter your details into the webinar attendance form so that we could see you this so that we could send you, excuse me, so we could send you the CE credit via email, and that usually arrives via email within one week after the webinar presentation. Today is the fifth presentation of the Everything Blue Sky Plan educational webinar series. And for today's topic, we're going to be discussing custom surgical guides, how to fabricate, design, and manufacture surgical, surgical guides for guided surgical kits that are not in the Blue Sky Plan software. We're also going to be discussing and breaking down different concepts in terms of the offset and drilling depth. So even if you're not going to be designing surgical guides yourself for systems that are not in the Blue Sky Plan software, this is still a very educational and relevant seminar because it will give you a deeper understanding of how the, the software works, the principles behind the software, and how we go uh, about calculating the different settings for the surgical guide. The previous webinar presentations that have given us, that have been given as part of this series include Introduction to Guided Surgery, where we discussed basic principles about CT and CBCT scans, uh, functionality of the Blue Sky Plan software, the different views and screens and layouts and mouse functionalities, and how to go about uh, loading data and the importance of acquiring relevant data. The second presentation was about model-based surgical guides, designing and fabricating surgical guides using a model, and we discussed that in the context of the Blue Sky Plan Wizard. The third presentation was about fabricating and designing a surgical guide using the impression inversion technique, and again, that was within the process flow of the wizard. The most recent presentation was on the features and functionality in the normal mode, we discussed different capabilities the software has and how to go about to use the software to accomplish those different tasks in the normal mode. So if you find that we're discussing topics that you might not be so relevant, so familiar with in today's presentation, then I recommend going back and watching the recordings. The recordings are available uh, via blueskyplan.com and via, available via YouTube that will get you up to speed. Right before last week's webinar presentation, we released a new build for the Blue Sky Plan software. We fully integrated two jaw ortho planning, includes automatic bracket placement, attaching buttons, and with the ortho module, everything can be exported and the exports currently are free of charge. They can be exported at no cost. We also include the ability to edit and manipulate and save CT surfaces as well as models at no cost. So if you're using a surgical guide module and you haven't yet designed a surgical guide, you could go ahead and do all sorts of manipulations to your CT scan or to your model, including adding a base, converting a CT scan to an STL file, inverting impressions, cutting models. All of that stuff could be done in the Blue Sky Plan software and exported at no cost. Once you go ahead and design a surgical guide, then once you're doing the export, there is a cost involved. But we've added the ability for the user to do all these different surface manipulations and editing and export that at no cost as well. So that's also a very significant update in our last software release. Finally, the last new feature that I want to discuss before we get into today's topic is Lab Pronto. Lab Pronto is a new button that appears in the horizontal toolbar in the Blue Sky Plan software and allows you to place lab orders for digital services as well as physical products with a click. You click on the Lab Pronto button, it opens a very simple order form and the order is placed. And the way that that works is that the order is sent out to a network of certified labs and the lab that has the time to handle the order at the first available convenience claims the job. So what that results in is a very speedy turnaround. If you're ordering a digital service such as treatment planning or ortho 
plan or ortho tooth segmentation, then turnaround time is extremely quick. If you're ordering a physical product such as aligners, then of course you have to take into consideration the, the shipping time. So speedy turnaround, great prices, and amazing service. And some of some of the services that are being offered currently with Lab Pronto is two jaw ortho tooth segmentation. So you could have the teeth segmented in the ortho plan for $49. You're able to have models printed for liner fabrication, and that's $30 plus $13 a model. You could order the liners directly for $30 plus $20 in the liner. And you could, or, you could order the printing of a surgical guide once it's completely designed and in STL format, you could have that printed for $49. Anyway, more information regarding that is available on blueskyplan.com forward slash lab pronto. And of course, you could just press the lab pronto button in the software to get more information regarding the services, their prices, and exactly what it includes and what it does not include. For today's topic for custom surgical guides, we're going to be discussing surgical guide fabrication for a guided kit, not in Blue Sky Plan. We're gonna be reviewing different terms and definitions, such as offset, drilling depth, which is great information, even if you're not going to be creating custom surgical guides, it will give you a deeper understanding into guided surgery in the Blue Sky Plan software. We're gonna discuss the custom guide settings and how to apply them in the software. And we're gonna discuss dealing with problems connected to surgical guide design in terms of uh, the placement of the software guide tubes and conflicting uh, metal cylinders with anatomy and other issues as well. So the normal way to add an implant in the Blue Sky Plan software is you go ahead and click on the add implant button and then you have the ability to select from a list of different implant systems. You could select the relevant implant system, select the implant that you want to place, then you go ahead and, and click and place it into the Blue Sky Plan software. Once the implant is placed, then in the implant list panel, on the very top, you have the option to select the drill kit. Now that drop down list will only be populated with the drill kits that are compatible with the implant that you selected and the implant you placed. Now, what happens if you want to create a surgical guide, but the implant system is not on the list? And when I say implant system, it's not just the implant system, it's also all the settings for the guided surgical kit. Because the way that it works in a normal situation is once you select the implant and you select the surgical kit from that drop down menu, you don't need to be concerned about any calculations, any values the software is doing all of that for you. So of course, the first thing that we recommend is if your implant system isn't in the software, then you could use Blue Sky Bio implants. Or really what I was going to say is you should speak to the implant company and we're able to, with their help, we're able to integrate into the software any implant system. So we need the cooperation of the manufacturer, but with their co cooperation, we're able to go ahead and add their implants and their guide surgical kit to the Blue Sky Plan software. So that, of course, should should be uh, should be your first step. You could speak to your rep, you could speak to the company and uh, suggest that they go ahead and add their implants. We've recently added over 20 different implant systems and guide surgical kits in our recent uh, software update as well. We're gonna be discussing different situations as you see on the screen about what is a problem and what is not a problem what makes the left side uh, not a problem and the right side a problem. And similar situation if you have software guide tubes, if implants are placed close together and you have software guide tubes that are overlapping each other, which situation is problematic and which situation is not. And lastly, positioning of the software guide tube and how it touches or hopefully doesn't touch the model and what the ramifications of that are and how to go ahead and deal with that. So let's get started. We're dealing with the advanced mode, guide fabrication for any guided surgical kit. Just as an overview, the advanced mode gives the user a lot more control of the different settings and measurements, and we're gonna see that. 
as opposed to normal mode, where the normal mode has most settings set as a default, and the software is doing all the calculations and, and taking the default options. Advanced mode gives the user more control, gives them more options for better or for worse, and that's what we're going to be discussing today. The first thing that we have to understand is what our software guide to we see on the screen. So here's a multiple choice question. What are software guide tubes? A, the future holes of the surgical guide. B, indicators of the width, height, and angle of the surgical guide holes. C, housing for the metal cylinders. D, the drill flight path. And E, all of the above. And of course, the answer is all of the above. Those brown software guide tubes are going to be the holes in the surgical guide. So once you have the software guide tubes on and activated, and those are positioned automatically by the software, and we're going to discuss how the user could go ahead and change those settings. But once you have the software guide tubes and you draw your curve, then the software goes ahead and uses that information to create the surgical guide. So those brown software guide tubes are going to be the future holes of the surgical guide. So their positioning and their angle and their height is of course of the utmost importance because that's what's guiding the drill to create the osteotomy at the proper angle, position, and depth. So just to look at this image, what are we looking at here? We're looking at an implant with a space between the implant and that software, those software guide tubes that we discussed. And into the software guide tube is going to go the master metal cylinder. Now that master metal cylinder is fixed into the surgical guide. It's inserted by the user, by the lab, and that goes into the printed surgical guide. The drill length, in order to create the osteotomy at the correct depth, the drill length consists of the implant. It consists of the offset, which we're going to be discussing to a great extent during this presentation. And it exists of the lip of that master cylinder. The drill needs to be long enough to reach all the way from the stop on the drill and to go down to the tip of the implant. And when I say the drill length and, and, and needing to be long enough, the drill length is from the tip of the drill until the drill reaches a stop or until the drill bottoms out. And what needs to be added to this image is if you're using a key or a handle as part of the guided surgical kit, then that lip of the key or the handle needs to be included here as well. So again, it's the implant, the offset, and the metal lips is what creates the drill depth. Now, before we can even get into the software, and adjust the settings in the software, we need to know what's going to be going into that software guide tube. We need to know which metal cylinder is going to be going into the software guide tube because that's going to indicate for us what the width of the software guide tube should be. Again, the software guide tube is the whole of the printed surgical guide. So inside the printed surgical guide, we're going to be placing a metal cylinder. So the first thing that needs to be determined is what is going to be placed into the software guide tube, which metal cylinder. So in order to determine and select the metal cylinder, we need to know what's going to be going inside the metal cylinder because the inner diameter of the metal cylinder should be a tenth of a millimeter wider than the drill or key that's going to be going into it. So the first determining factor, the most important determining factor of selecting the correct metal cylinder is to take the width of that key or the width of that drill, if there's no key in the guided surgical kit, and add a tenth of a millimeter, and that's gonna give you the internal diameter of the metal cylinder. Blue Sky Bio carries around 70 different metal cylinders to accommodate really every guided surgical kit or almost every guided surgical kit. Um, and you could see that on our website. The URL is on the screen. We could see all of the different varieties 
of metal cylinders. And for each metal cylinder, it tells you what the inner diameter is, it tells you what the outer diameter is, it tells you what the height is. So you could take the component that's going inside the metal cylinder, add a tenth of a millimeter, and then from the website, select the relevant metal cylinder. Now, once we select the relevant metal cylinder, we already have a good part of the information that we're looking to obtain. Once we select the metal cylinder based on its inner diameter, then we know the outer diameter of the metal cylinder and we know the height of the metal cylinder. So when we look at the settings in the software, either to the outside diameter of the metal cylinder, and that will give us the guide hole diameter. Okay, what we're looking at is showing us what the total drill length is, and it's showing us what the offset is on the screen. So the drill length, again, is going from the tip of the implant all the way to the top of the printed surgical guide and including the metal cylinder. So if there's a lip on the metal cylinder, if there's a lip of a key, then the drill needs to be long enough to extend down from there as well. The offset is going from the top of the implant to the top of the printed surgical guide. And here we see this sliced again, sliced a bit differently. We have the, on the right side, we have the lip of the metal cylinder and that sits on top of that software guide tube, which we could see the brown cylinder to the right of it. We have the offset, which is the distance between the top of the implant and the top of the software guide tube and to the implant height. And when you put those together, you get the drill depth. Now, how do we go about determining the offset? When we look at the different variables or the different uh, elements, we have the drill length. The drill is fixed. The length of the drill is fixed. We could switch drills to a longer or shorter one if necessary. But if we're using the correct, if we're using a cor the correct drill, then the drill length is fixed. The implant length is fixed as well. Again, we could switch the implant, both the existing implant, the implant length is fixed. The metal cylinder lips is also fixed. So the variable that we're able to change, the variable which is variable is the offset. So when we're trying to calculate and make the drill length equal to the implant length plus the metal cylinder plus the offset, and then the component that we're able to change and to play with is the offset. That's the setting, that's the setting in the software that we're able to go ahead and change. So how do we go ahead and calculate the offset? First, we see how long the drill is. What's the drill length until it reaches a stop or the drill bottoms out? Then we subtract from there the implant height and we subtract from there the metal lips. Okay, and that gives us the value that we should enter into the software as the offset. So here's a summary of what we discussed so far. The guide hole diameter of the software guide tube should be a tenth of a millimeter larger than the outside width of the metal cylinder. The height should match the height of the metal cylinder and any cylinder lips should not be included. And the offset is the height of the top of the implant to the top of the printed guide. Let's take a look at an example. So if we're looking at a master cylinder, metal cylinder that has an inner diameter 5.11, and we're dealing with possible drill lengths, different drills that are disposable of 17 millimeters, 21 millimeters, 24 and 28. So first we go ahead and identify the metal cylinder that has a matching inner diameter. And then we could see, this is the information that's presented on the website. We could see that the inner diameter is 5.1, the outer diameter is 6.1, and the height is six millimeters. And the lip is one millimeter of the total height. So that's the information that we're gonna be working with. So when, when we have that information, the first thing we do is we set our guide hole diameter to be a 10th of a millimeter larger and the outside of the metal cylinder. The outside of the metal cylinder has a diameter of 
So our guide hole diameter should be 6.2. The height of the metal cylinder is 6 millimeters. The height of the metal cylinder is 6 millimeters. The top one millimeter is the lip, so that's not included. So the height that we put into the software is five millimeters. The, the offset, so let's take a look how we calculate the offset. If we placed a 10 millimeter implant, for example, and the metal cylinder has one millimeter lip, then the offset should be set to 10 millimeters to use for the for a 21 millimeter drill. So again, if the implant has a, is 10 millimeters and there's a one millimeter lip, and we're using a 21 millimeter drill, then the offset should be 10 millimeters. The ideal range of values for the offset should be between eight and 11 millimeters. If you are outside of this range, then it means you have to switch drills. So in our example, if the offset wasn't between 8 and 11, then we would either go to the 17 millimeter or the 24 millimeter drill accordingly. So let's go ahead and take a look at this case in the software. First, we switch to advanced mode in Blue Sky Plan. We have a new drop down in the top right corner that allows easy access to switch between different modes and modules in the software. We could go there or we could go to module and switch to advanced mode. As we said, the guide hole diameter should be one millimeter larger than the outside of the metal cylinder. So we go ahead and we enter that value into guide hole diameter, and we set that at 6.2. The height of the metal cylinder without the lip should be set, and that should go into the height field on the right side of the screen, right under guide hole diameter. And then we go ahead and we set the offset. And as we calculated previously, the offset should be set to 10 millimeters, which makes the drill depth of 21 millimeters work and consist of 10 millimeter for the implant, 10 millimeter for the offset, and one millimeter for the lip. Now, once we make the changes for one implant, as you can see on the top of the implants panel, there's two different implants placed here. Once we make the change for one implant, if the settings are the same for the other implants, then we don't need to re-enter them each time. We can just press the apply to all button and the settings will be copied to the other implants. Okay, so we discussed how to go ahead and, and set in the software the different values for guide hole diameter, height and offset. Now we're gonna take a look at the guide panel. Once we have finished with the implant panel, which had the values that we entered, we switch over to the guide panel for the guide fabrication. First thing you wanna do with this guide panel, this guide panel has more options than the guide panel normal mode. As we discussed earlier, the advanced mode gives the user more options. So this is a bit more extensive guide panel with more options. The first thing we want to do is confirm that we're using the correct model. What some users might not be aware of is we have the little button for settings. And when we click on the button for settings, if we wanted to change the guide thickness, we could click on that button and then change it. And we could also check or uncheck the remove undercuts option. We have the guide thickness setting in the tools preferences, but what that is, is that sets the default value. So the default value in the software is three millimeters. If you're gonna change it on a per case basis for whatever reason, then you're gonna do that by clicking on the settings button 
in the guide panel. We also have a button to repair models that does some model repairs. If your model is problematic and you're not able to fabricate a surgical guide off of it, we have a button there that repairs some of the issues for models that also users may not be aware of, but you can see the yellow arrows pointing to it in the guide panel. We also have different options for the brush diameter. In the normal mode, the software sets these values automatically and doesn't give the user control over what the brush diameter is. But here in the advanced mode, you're able to change what the diameter is. And what this, what the brush diameter is, is it clear, clears an area around the osteotomy in the surgical guide to make sure there's full clearance for the handpiece to reach the relevant depth. So that clears away the area around the hole in the surgical guide where the, ostomy, where the osteotomy is going to be created to make sure there's full clearance for the handpiece. The guide quality, the user has options here if they want to create a guide with the same with the same quality and the same number of, of triangles as the model, which would be the very high option, or if they want to use the normal or high option, which will use a reduced number of triangles. And today, when you're importing models in, into the software, you're acquiring models from your scanner, you're acquiring models, a, a model scan today could be 250 megabytes, which could it consists of millions of different triangles. In actuality, you don't need a model that high of a resolution. It's great that we have that capability and you don't need a surgical guide that high of a resolution. So if you want to export the surgical guide at a bit of lower resolution, you could choose either the normal or high options, which is still definitely more than accurate and more than sufficient for your surgical guide. The option to create a scan appliance guide is if you're creating a surgical guide based on the dual scan technique. If you're scanning a denture and you're converting the denture into a surgical guide, and that creates the surgical guide based on the denture. We're going to be discussing this more at length in the next webinar presentation where we're discussing creating sur uh, surgical guides for dentureless cases. And then we have the rest of the surgical guide panel, which is pretty much the same as the normal mode. You have the ability to define which draw, to draw the curve, edit the curve, save the surgical guide, uh, emboss text and smooth out the external side of the surgical guide. So that's the panel. That's the guide panel for guide fabrication in advanced mode and the different options and capabilities that it offers. Custom drill kit setting. So there's an option when you're in advanced mode, there's another option for surgical guide, which you could pick from the drop down list of drill kits in the implant list panel for a custom kit. This option doesn't exist if you're in normal mode. When you switch to advanced mode, you're gonna see an option for a custom kit. Now, when you choose that option, the custom kit will remember the guide tube settings after a particular implant size is used. So if you're using a particular implant and every time you use that particular size implant you want to update the guide hole diameter and height and offset because you're using a, a surgical kit that's not in the software you don't need to go re-entering that data every time if you enter it once for a particular implant using the custom kit and the next time you select that implant the settings will automatically appear in the software so this is, again, this is a very powerful tool. If you're using an implant of a certain dimension and you're either selecting that implant from whatever implant company you're selecting it from, or you're putting in custom dimensions for the implant, once you have that implant selected and you modify the guide hole diameter height and offset for that implant size, and the next time you place that implant with the custom kit, 
they'll have the values already coming up for you in the software. That's a capability that I'm not sure how many users are familiar with it, but it's a very important and powerful functionality. We also have in the software built-in drill stops. Built-in drill stops are printed as part of the surgical guide and they stop the drill and the handpiece at the correct depth. This is designed for situations where the drill doesn't have a built-in stop. So if you're using a drill without a built-in stop, you want the depth to be determined by the handpiece not being able to be inserted any farther. So you're able to activate those built-in drill stops. We see the built-in drill stops on the screen. They're the color green, they're the semicircles. They allow the drill to be inserted from the open side, but the handpiece is still stopped by that semicircle extension coming out from the software guide tube. And that's gonna be printed as part of the surgical guide. So if you want to create a surgical guide with those options, you wanna select Blue Sky Bio Direct Cut Drills. And that will have those built-in drill stops show up on the screen. You see the checkbox for the built-in drill stops that's turned on by default when you select the Blue Sky Bio Direct Cut drills. Okay, so we've discussed the different settings in the software. We discussed how we get those values. We discussed what those settings in the different fields mean. We discussed how we go ahead and determine which metal cylinder should be selected and how that determines the uh, guide hole diameter of the software guide tube. And it gives us the height of the software guide tube. We discussed as well a very important point that we need to make sure the inner circle of the software guide tube doesn't have any interference either from an adjacent software guide tube or from the patient's anatomy and adjacent tooth. Because if there is interference, then the metal cylinder won't enter properly or we won't be able to seat the surgical guide properly in the patient's mouth. So now let's take a look at dealing with some of those problems. So this is some of the screenshots that I had up right at the beginning of the presentation. And if we look at the left side, we see that there's no problem. And recalling what I just mentioned earlier, what we're looking at is the inner diameter of the software guide tube. If the inner diameter of the software guide tube is intact, then we're good to go. What we see on the right side of the screen is that there's a problem because we see there's interference from the adjacent tooth it's impending on the inner diameter of the software guide tube, and that's problematic. In this situation, on the left side of the screen, we see that the software guide tubes are bumping into each other, but it's, it's not a problem because the inner diameter of the software guide tubes are intact. We're gonna see how the software knows how to deal with that situation, and it's not a problem. On the right side of the screen, we see that the inner diameters are not intact. They interfere with each other, and that is our problematic situation. In this situation as well, even though the adjacent teeth are touching the other diameters of the software guide tube, and the different software guide tubes are touching each other, because the inner diameters are intact, and that's the key point that I keep repeating, there's no problem. The software, when it fabricates the surgical guide, we're gonna see this in just a minute, and it fabricates the surgical guide is going to subtract and remove that part of the surgical guide so there is no interference. And here we see the surgical guide that was fabricated. So to the right and the left of osteotomies, we see, first of all, we see that the brush tool clear the way that part of the surgical guide to reduce it to the height of the top of the software guide tubes to make sure there's full access for the handpiece to enter to uh, enter fully. We also see that the software has reduced the areas that were interfering in, with uh, the adjacent teeth to make sure that the surgical guide could seat properly. 
Now, the metal cylinders, because the inner diameter of the software guide tube is intact, the metal cylinders have no problem going into the surgical guide. Also, the wall, which was common to both of the osteotomy holes, so it's a shared wall, that's fine also. But that won't interfere with the, with this, with the metal cylinders. So we're still good in terms of that. So the, the software makes the walls a bit thinner in order to take into consideration those adjacent teeth that are close by. But since we have the inner diameter intact in the software guide tubes and in the surgical guide, we won't have any problem inserting the master metal cylinders or seating the guide. So how do we deal with these problematic situations? So the first suggestion is if there is the ability to adjust the implant position or the angle without compromising on the long-term goals of the patient's treatment, then that's, that's a good option if you're able to tweak the angle or tweak the positioning. The second option is switch to a pilot guide or a narrower implant. And what you see on the screen is that those software guide tube holes have been reduced significantly from the implant panel where we selected the surgical guide. You could simply switch that surgical guide selection to the option for the pilot drills. And that will make the software guide tube smaller and it will remove the problems. You could also replace the implants placed with an hour implant and that will automatically update the software guide tubes as well. If, of course, if you're creating custom ones and you've entered the data, then you should update that data accordingly. And the issue with this is it won't give you guidance for the full sequence of drills, but it will give you the osteotomy, it will give you angulation, placement, and depth for either the pilot or for an hour drill. And then you can take the surgical guide out and you can use the final drill to create the correct size for the final osteotomy. The third solution, which is good, if the two software guide tubes are crashing into each other and interfering with the inner diameter, is to create two guides. And you could see how I do that in each of the different screenshots. If we look at the screenshot on the top right, you could see that only the top implant has a check mark for the software guide tube. The software guide tube is that column that we see with the, the brown software guide tube on top. There's only a check mark in, for the top implant, which means that only that software guide tube is visible. And when you fabricate the surgical guide, it will only create an osteotomy for the software guide tube that's visible. And then you could do the reverse for the other implant for the other osteotomy. You uncheck the first implant, you check the second implant, and you create a surgical guide for that second implant. So this is a possible solution in situations where there's not enough room to insert two metal cylinders next to each other. And again, that's because the inner diameter of the software guide tubes are bumping into each other. So you could create two surgical guides one for each osteotomy and put separate metal cylinders into each one of them. And what's great about that is that it's still only one export fee. Even though you create a surgical guide and you are you are being charged to export that surgical guide, you can export as many surgical guides or as many components from the software and it's still only one export fee. So that's an important point. And the other important point is there's no need to redraw the curve each time. You can see that there's the edit curve button. And if you drew the curve once, and then you click the edit curve button, and the curve will reappear. So you just click the edit curve button, and then you press the create surgical guide button. And that will create your second surgical guide. Now I have the yellow arrow pointing to the drop down menu on top to select the relevant metal, uh, model. Because once you create the first surgical guide, then the active model is going to shift to the surgical guide created. So then you just press the down arrow to open up the drop down, and you select the model and not the surgical guide. So that's just a point to be aware of. So the added, if you're printing this yourself, then the added cost 
for the second surgical guide, as opposed to having one surgical guide, is just the material to print this, this the second surgical guide. Now let's take a look at this problem. This problem, we see that the problem is the software guide tube is interfering with the model, which is the patient's, which is uh, of course the patient's anatomy. So you can have a problem serving the metal cylinder. You're gonna have a problem seating the surgical guide. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, if there's interference with the software guide tube, then there's gonna be interference with the metal cylinder as well. So to address this problem is we take a look at the offset. If we recall the offset, is going to control the height of that software guide tube because the offset's the measurement from the top of the implant to the top of the software guide tube. If we increase the offset, then we're going to move that software guide tube up farther away from the patient's anatomy. So if we go ahead and increase the offset, then we can see that there's now clearance between the software guide tube and the model, and we've accomplished our goal. But now we've removed that problem, but what happens to the drilling depth? The drilling depth will change because the offset changed. And as we mentioned earlier, the drilling depth is based on three things. The implant length, the offset, and the metal cylinder lips. So if we have an 8 millimeter offset, and we have a drilling depth of 19.5, 11 plus 8 plus 0.5 for the metal cylinder lip. If we change the offset to 9, We've just increased the required length of the drill from 19.5 to 20.5. So that needs to be taken into consideration. You might need a different drill, or you might not. But for example, if you have a 21 millimeter drill and you've just changed the offset to 20.5, then what would you do to accommodate the 21 millimeter drill? You'd increase the offset by another 0.5 millimeters so that you have a drilling depth of 21 millimeters, which will match the drill being used. So that resolves the issue of the software guide tube being too low and interfering with the model. And the way that we resolved it, is by increasing the offset to raise the software guide tube to, to relieve the problem. But in the process, what we also did is we changed the drilling depth. So we need to be aware of that change, take that into consideration, think about which drills, which drill, which drills is going to be used. And of course, modify the offset as needed so that the drill will stop at the stop while creating the correct osteotomy depth. Okay, so we've covered the topics that I wanted to cover for today, and I apologize for the technical issue that we had in the middle, and I thank everybody for joining us um, to re-logging back in. I'm going to repost the link put in your details for the CE credits so that we could send you the CE credit. I'll put that into the chat box as soon as uh, we end this presentation. But the one great place to learn more, of course, is the Blue Sky Bio user group on Facebook. That's the place where you're going to get the fastest response to the questions that you have. The group is monitored by Blue Sky Bio. There are also a lot of dentists that are there that are very gener generous with their time and always uh, providing feedback on cases that are being posted or answering questions as well to so the Facebook group. Definitely recommend joining the Facebook group. That's where you're going to get your fastest response and also get the, the latest updates regarding anything connected to the software functionality because that's where we post information first. So I definitely recommend joining the Facebook group. You can search for blueskybio.com user group. On the screen, you can see the contact information for support, plan at blueskybio.com and the phone number. And of course, my contact information is on the screen as well. 
blueskyplan.com has a wealth of information. We have an entire section connected to education. We have free training courses there. We have recorded webinars. We have upcoming webinars. We have information regarding live events, live training courses as well. So blueskyplan.com, check that out. Click on education and you're going to see a tremendous amount of valuable information that could be learned from there. So that uh, wraps up today's presentation. Next week, we're going to be presenting on the topic of creating a surgical guide for edentulous patients. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day.